Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, Matt here. Uh, this video is going to be the first in a series of videos that is designed to better acquaint users with FSFO version 5, which is the latest edition of the Flight Simulator First Officer series. In part one, we're going to take it easy and we're just going to demonstrate how to install FSFO as well as connect it to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Okay, the first thing you want to do is you want to go to flightsimfirstofficer.com. No need to write the links down. I'm going to go ahead and leave them in the description uh, so you will have them ready. Once you get to the site, you want to click on the Downloads tab, and then you'll be presented with the Download option. Please note there are currently two versions of FSFO that work with Microsoft Flight Simulator. They are FSFO Next and FSFO version 5. The version you will download and use depends on which aircraft you are flying. For every aircraft except the Phoenix A320 and PMDG 737, you will continue to use FSFO Next. For the Phoenix uh, A320 and PMDG 737, you have the option to use FSFO version 5, which again is the latest version. Please keep checking back to this website as I adapt FSFO Next profiles to work with version 5. I will list them here. Note that both versions require FSU IPC7, which is an application um, developers use to communicate with Microsoft Flight Simulator. Also note this number right here, version 7.4.1. This tells which version currently works with FSFO. It is not recommended that you upgrade until this number right here changes because uh, it may not work with the current version of FSFO. Okay, what we'll do now is we'll go ahead after we download version 5. Again, there'll be links here once we go live, which will happen here hopefully within the next 24 hours. Click on your link here and you download FSFO version 5. Once we download it, we would click on download FSU IPC 7. Again, make sure you uh, download the top link. This version works with Microsoft Flight Simulator. These versions do not. They work for legacy ESP platforms like P3D and FSX. Again, note the version 7.4.1. We discussed this earlier, so we know that this version will work with FSFO. What we want to do then is we want to click on the link and we would click keep the file. Since I've already downloaded it, uh, there's no need to do so again. So once the, uh, once the FSFO is downloaded, it will uh, download and install uh, underscore FSUPC7.zip. You would right click on it and you would go to extract all. A folder uh, giving you the option to where to extract it to will appear. Just extract it to the directory that it's installed in. Um, and then what will happen is it will extract it uh, and then auto open. You are then looking for the install underscore FSUIPC7.exe. I already have it uh, moved over to the desktop for expedience. What you would then do is right click on it and you would run it as an administrator. You will be presented with a publisher unknown warning dialog box. Essentially what this is, is every application that's not registered in the Microsoft store shows up as an unknown publisher. Go ahead and click yes. You may not or may not get the next dialog box. It would depend if you already have FSUI PC7 installed. If you do, you will have to uninstall it first. So you would just click OK. Then you'll be presented with the uninstall option. You'll click uninstall. And then this is uh, what the option everybody will get. It will ask you to install FSU or welcome you to install FSU IPC7, which case we will click next. We will agree to the license. And then please ensure that we have WASM enabled. That's the big one right here, guys. WASM is essentially the utility that allows FSFO to read the current state of the system as well as set them. I also like to have AutoStar FSU IPC7 with Microsoft Flight Simulator enabled because I use um, Add-on Linker. So Add-on Linker automatically starts Microsoft Flight Simulator and then FSU IPC would automatically start every time Microsoft Flight Simulator starts. You do not need the uh, documentation or the extras. So this one is mandatory. I do recommend this one. These ones are entirely up to you. Then we're going to click next and I'm going to install it into my Microsoft Flight Simulator utilities directory. I do always recommend you install software outside of your program files directory, but that is up to you. We will then click install, click okay. 
And if you have a key for FSU IPC7, you can enter it here. However, it is also free to use, so you can also hit skip. Yes, I want to add it shortcut to my desktop. And there you go. That is how do you install FSU IPC7. It can all be done within a matter of minutes. So next, with FSU IPC7 installed, we're going to install FSFO version 5. All right, to install FSFO version 5, again, we are going to right click on the EXE, go to run as administrator. The same uh, publisher uh, dialog warning will show up. We're going to click yes. Again, uh, to the welcome screen, accept the license, which essentially says you won't uh, give your key away or let other people use it. Click next. This is the information that we've already gone over. It tells you A, to shut your uh, antivirus off, run it as administrator, and ensure you have FSU IPC7 installed, which we do. Okay, and yes, I do want to create a desktop icon. Click next and click install. FSFO is again, a lightweight utility. It is less than 125 megabytes. So it should not take long to uh, both download and install. Just wait for it to install. So again, guys, you should be able to install FSU IPC7 and FSFO within a matter of a couple of minutes. Click next. And I do, uh, no, we're not gonna launch it just yet. I'm gonna click finish. And then there are a couple errors that we wanna, potential errors we wanna discuss. So one error you could potentially get is a uh, uh, missing .NET framework. If you happen to see this error, it's not a big deal. All you have to do is go to the .NET uh, Microsoft website and you wanna look for the uh, top package, right? Which is uh, 6.0.417. Uh, this number could be different depending on when you go to the web page. Just make sure you download the one in the top right corner. Look for Windows if you're using the Windows operating system and then download the 64-bit operating system. If you're um, using Microsoft Flight Simulator, you have a 64-bit operating system. So then you would just download this and you would run the EXE to install the, uh, the, uh, the uh, excuse me, the six Microsoft.NET 6 framework. Again, this is the Microsoft's newest framework. So if you haven't had a Windows update in a while, uh, you could potentially be missing that framework. Not a big deal. If you run into any problems with that, just let us know and we'll, we'll be sure to get you uh, set up. The second potential error you could get is when you open your form, it could look a little dis, uh, distorted like this. Pretty easy fix to this. What you will do is you will go to your uh, in uh, Microsoft, uh, excuse me, your FSFO version five, right click on it, go to properties, go to compatibility, go to change high DPI settings, and you would override the scaling and you would select system. So that would then uh, overcome uh, the, uh, the distorted look and it would, uh, when you open it, it will make it uh, look normal. The third potential uh, error you could run into is when you're downloading sound files, it may ask you for administrator permissions. In doing so, you can handle this in one of two ways. You can simply right click again on the shortcut, click run as administrator. What this will do is it will run FSFO as an administrator for that one time. If you wanna run FSFO as administrator all the time, you would just go to properties, compatibility, run as administrator, click apply, and then click OK. Again, running as an administrator is uh, is not as important as it was for FSFO. Next, as uh, now, instead of writing to its own directory, uh, Microsoft, uh, excuse me, FSFO now writes to your um, directory, your document, so uh, which doesn't require elevated permission. So it creates its FSFO underscore version 5 directory. And this is where it contains all of its data, which is also useful. You can just, when there's an update to FSFO, you can just install over the top of it because it no longer touches any of the data within your documents folder. So just install right over the top of it, unless you're told explicitly to uninstall from the Windows uh, program. All right, guys, that's how to install FSFO as well as go over uh, some of the potential errors you may encounter. With that out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and fire up Microsoft Flight Simulator, and we're going to talk about how to connect uh, FSFO to 
and uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. Okay, we now have a uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator fired up and ready. What I'll do now is I'll go ahead and launch um, FSFO version five. And we'll just drag it down to the uh, to the screen here. And here we go. So as you can see, uh, FSFO, I had auto connect on. So what happened is uh, when I launch FSFO, it will first download the Simbri flight plan as it did here, and then it will attempt to connect to the, uh, the simulator automatically. Uh, if you do not want FSFO to auto connect, you could just simply uh, click on this option right here, auto connect, and then you would control it manually by clicking on this green button up here. Uh, the first thing you want to look for is once you uh, connect FSFO, whether manually or automatic, is to ensure that it, it detects the aircraft profile. And you could do so by just looking at the middle right here, lower middle portion of the FSFO screen. You can see that it did indeed detect the Phoenix A320. Now, sometimes you'll note that this doesn't always happen. Let's say if you happen to download uh, a texture from the FlightSim.2, sometimes the painters don't correctly uh, populate the aircraft.config with the right model name. So FSFO may have trouble trouble uh, identifying what aircraft you're in. If that happens and you own a license for, let's say, the Phoenix uh, 320, what you would do is just go to setup, go to license, and then you would double click on the aircraft uh, that you want to force. So in this case, I will force it to the PMDG 737 because I own a license for that. Obviously, this wouldn't work well uh, because this is not the PMDG 737. If you try to click on a, a, an aircraft that you don't own a license for, uh, it obviously it obviously won't work. Uh, let's go ahead and force the Phoenix. Uh, and then you can see down here that the Phoenix is indeed connected. Uh, also, uh, if this is your first time with FSFO, highly encourage you to go to the support and just go to the getting started and have a look at the minimum steps uh, required for every flight. There's a really quick read down there and also explains the difference between the, what a flow and a checklist is uh, so you under, understand how FSFO should be operating. All the voice commands too are also listed here. So if you choose to lose voice commands, uh, just take a look here and they will be updated as new commands are added. Okay, so that covers uh, how to install FSFO as well as how to connect it to the simulator and to ensure that it's working correctly. In the next uh, part two, we're gonna go over the editor. So we'll see you back uh, momentarily.